With the increasing popularity of the BenQ SW series of hardware calibrated display, many creative professionals are now buying these displays and many of you are running issues with calibration, using Palette Master Element and having a fail validation. So what I'd like to do in this video is give you some tips and some steps that you can follow to pre-diagnose your issue before you contact your local BenQ support. I'm Art Suan Sang, BenQ Ambassador, and let's get started. Before we get started, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. All right, so let's talk about BenQ SW Hardware Calibrated Display and Palette Master Element. A lot of people are running into a failed validation. That means that, for instance, when you try to validate the calibration, the ICC profile that Palette Master Element created, it always fails. The first thing that I will tell you to do in this case is go ahead and update to the latest version of Palette Master Element. The latest version as of this filming is 1.3.8 and 1.3.8 is significant enough that it solves a lot of problems, it fixes a lot of bugs that have been plaguing Palette Master Element for literally close to a year. So again, before you do anything, go ahead and update Palette Master Element first. The second thing that you want to look for is look at the display cable that you are linking up to your BenQ display. So for instance, if you are using an HDMI cable, this is the cable looks like this here. The HDMI cable has been known to generate a lot of issues. Now, if your computer have an HDMI cable directly out from the video card, it can cause problems. If you're using a dongle, for instance, a USB type C to an HDMI is also known to cause problems. Some of the reasons why you may be running into issues when you're using an HDMI cable is because the HDMI standard is really designed for TV usage. It's designed to connect Blu-ray, DVD player, gaming console, cable box, and etc. all the other accessories to your television. The thing with all these accessories is that it carries the display signal to the TV, but it's also carrying sound, it's also carrying the HDR signal. So where the cut happens is in the output range. Many times when you use an HDMI cable, the range of RGB output gets squished down instead of 0 to 255, which is a full range HDMI, it gets cut down to 16 to 235. This way is cutting the blackest tone and also the whitest tone out. The thing is that when you're viewing this on TV, it's not a big deal at all because the TV color space is much smaller than a computer screen or a professional screen like the BenQ that we have here. The problem now becomes when you're trying to do a full hardware calibration on these hardware calibrated display that can show 99% Adobe RGB. It becomes a problem and becomes really apparent. You're going to get a validation that fails every single time when you use an HDMI cable because sometimes on some computers an HDMI will output full range, many times a computer will output limited range, and there's really not a good way for you to go in and change the setting on both the Mac and the PC. So the one thing that I would look first is that if you're using HDMI cable and you're doing professional photography work or video editing work, especially on display that has other type of signal cable, go ahead and use the other signal cables instead. For example, if your display has USB Type-C, go ahead and use USB Type-C because that is going to be a much more robust connection rather than the HDMI. Or if your display has the tried and true display port, which all BenQ lines of SW series have, use the display port. So one of the display port cables that I've used, this is for an older Mac or any other PC, is to use a full display port. This is going to plug into the BenQ display. And on the other end is a mini display port that you can plug into your older Mac or in this case your PC. Now if your PC does not come with a mini display port, you can always get a display port to display port cable that costs less than $10 and that will do the job just fine as well. The other thing too is that if you have a computer with USB Type-C and video output on there, for example Mac, the newer Mac laptop has Thunderbolt 3 on top of USB Type-C, what you can use is a USB Type-C and one that directly links to a display port cable. Now, notice how I'm not using a USB Type-C to HDMI because again, I haven't tested those cables. There's a lot of issues that could go wrong. I'm going to display port right away. So that's just something to keep in mind. The other thing too that a lot of users have been running into issues with is for instance, at the very first, when you launch Palette Master Element, it won't recognize the calibration device. And many users asking me like, does it really matter which, how I plug in the calibration device to the display? Not so much. Because you're going to have to use a USB uplink to display anyway, you can use the port on the side of the display to plug in a color calibrator. You can also plug in a color calibrator directly to your computer, and that's one way to really quickly test if there's a port issue on your BenQ display or not. So if you plug into your computer, it should work. 
Now, the thing is that BenQ Pallet Master Element uses the device OEM drivers. That means if you have an X-Rite device, it uses the X-Rite driver. If, it, if you're using a Spider device, it's using the Spider driver that they ship with it. The case in point is this. I have a user from across the world that run into a problem where every time he launches Pallet Master Element, it doesn't recognize a calibration device. So how do we fix that problem? The best way to do is to install the OEM software for your calibration device. So for instance, if you have the X-Rite i1 Display Pro or i1 Studio, go ahead and install the i1 Profiler. Plug it directly into the computer, launch that program, and see if those native program, those OEM program, will recognize the device. If it does, then obviously we need to do much more troubleshooting. But if it does not, then generally there's some driver conflict somewhere that's preventing even the OEM program from recognizing your calibration device. Specifically in this case, what have happened is that this user has installed DisplayCal on a PC before he have installed any of the native OEM software that comes with the device manufacturer. This is also the one that's causing Palette Master not to recognize the calibration device too. So if you run into that problem, this is how you can solve the issue. Speaking of software conflict, if you have the older Color Monkey software installed on your system, make sure that you uninstall that before you run Palette Master Element because that is known to cause conflicting issue with Palette Master Element. In fact, it prevents Palette Master Element from running properly or running at all. If you have an X-Rite device, the best device you can get right now to calibrate your display is the i1 Display Pro or the i1 Studio. If you have the more pro line of their color spectral photometer, the i1 Photo 2 or the i1 Photo Pro 3 Plus, those will work to calibrate your BenQ display as well. If you're using a Spider device, you can use a Spider 4, a Spider 5, or the best thing that you can get right now is going to be the Spider X to calibrate your BenQ display. Now, if you're looking to get a new colorimeter for your BenQ display, from my testing, my recommendation would be to get the i1 Display Pro. That has been the device I've been using for the longest time, and it's also been the device that I feel that produced the most accurate colors with the BenQ display or any other display out there. So these are some of the preliminary steps that you can use to troubleshoot your issues with the BenQ SWU hardware calibrated display before you call BenQ support. If you haven't yet, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated every time I upload really cool informative videos like this. And until next time, I just write.